Welcome to The Drawing Board. I'm your host and in-house artist, Erin Leffler. If you joined me before here on The Drawing Board, welcome back. And if it's your first time with me, here's a quick rundown of what happens on the show. Every episode of The Drawing Board, I invite guests from around the entertainment industry, and we learn a little bit more about what they do. And while we learn about what they do, I'm also drawing them in real time. Pretty fun, right? Well, I am super excited to introduce y'all to my guest today because if you're into animation, which I know a lot of you who watch this show are, you're really going to like my guest today. Working on over 25 plus films in the animation industry, he's done a lot of our animated beloved classics from films like Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, Hunchback of Notre Dame, Rescuers Down Under, and even Atlantis. He has contributed so many amazing characters to the animation world and has also written a bunch of awesome books to help artists around the world get better with quick sketching and different habits and tricks. Please welcome my guest, Ron Husband. Hi there! Good uh, morning, our time. We've got a couple of uh, hours difference, probably afternoon <laughs> where you are. Um, on the West Coast, you're on the East Coast, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there's a couple of, uh, but uh, yeah, thank you for uh, a marvelous introduction. Thank you for, for that. Uh, you know, you hold me up, how you go, you know, the, you know, the fall, the, the greater distance you have to fall. I gotta, gotta live up to, to that building. So, but thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, the wonderful thing about Zoom, you gotta love this, is that we can do stuff with people now around the globe and across the country, which is awesome for things like this because then we're able to hear different stories from people who may not be on the same time zone as us, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, for kids who may not be familiar with your work, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you did? Uh, well, I'm retired now, but I uh, worked for 30 years at the uh, Disney animation, uh, feature film animation department, started in 1975. And um, for the first 30 years, I was in feature animation. And for the last eight, I was in publication, Disney publications. And I've been retired uh, since 2013 and doing workshops and seminars and teaching at uh, art school, uh, art center in Pasadena, as well as um, uh, Mount Sac in Walnut, California. Uh, so keeping busy and doing uh, my own personal projects. Um, yeah, and you know, just keeping busy uh, in the art uh, field. Uh, so I didn't really retire from art. I just sort of changed lanes and sort of doing something a little, little different, uh, as well as the, uh, the honeydews that my wife had me do around the house. <laughs> you got to love those small little house projects as well. <laughs> So you had mentioned that you've been doing this for quite some time. I have to ask, because this is an interesting question that a lot of people have different opinions on. Before you started out, did you end up going to schooling for this or was this something that you kind of figured out along the way? Uh, no, I didn't go to schools particularly for animation uh, and I didn't figure it out on the way. I just sort of back into it, <laughs> so to speak. Um, <laughs> I, uh, after high school, uh, went to a junior college, uh, Citrus Junior College in uh, Susan, California. And I knew I wanted to do something in art because, uh, you know, from the time my earliest remembrance of drawing is like four years old. I remember exactly what I was doing, taking uh, wax paper, putting it over uh, comic book covers and copying the image. And I knew exactly where we lived uh, when I was doing that, uh, and I, and then, and I was, uh, I can trace back to, uh, four years of age. Like I, you know, the Lord blessed me to be able to draw. And it's just something like, if you're singing, you can run fast. It's something you do naturally. And I've always, uh, done art effortlessly. And, um, when I went to, um, after graduating from high school, going to college, um, I didn't know quite what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted to do something in art, but had no no direction and no real um, counseling as to you know exactly uh, a career path. Just taking class and and I was uh, playing football uh, in high school, and I did I thought after my last high school football game I, that was it. Uh, <laughs> I never put on a uniform again. But uh, when I went to uh, enrolled at uh, Citrus College. Um, I actually, I missed my, after high school, the, the season that I would have 
been a freshman and played in high school, played in college, I was waiting for um, results from an art school that I applied to our center. And uh, results came back really, really late because I took the SAT test really, really late. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so I didn't play that, uh, which would have been uh, my first year out of high school. But I did enroll and started up that January at uh, junior college and I ran track and played football. Uh, little did I know that that was gonna be one of the key foundations of, uh, of my career path. Uh, after uh, two years at uh, Citrus College, I uh, got my AA degree, I was offered a, a football scholarship to the University of Bad Las Vegas, which uh, was able to, you know, to go there and, uh, and, and get my BA from, uh, UNLV, and I, I sort of was narrowing it down to what I wanted to do as far as art. And uh, I wanted to be a commercial artist uh, to do book and magazine illustration. Cause I, you know, I seen uh, some of the uh, illustrators at, at that time in the early seventies. And uh, that seemed like what I wanted to do. I, I, I would, at one time I wanted to be a medical illustrator uh, and I was taking classes, kinesiology, all that really heavy, heavy stuff. And, uh, it was just because you have in, in order to be a medical illustrator, you had to take the same class that a medical student would be taking. So, you know, and, and really, really get really, really deep into uh, anatomy and all the stuff that goes along. And that was just really over my head. You know? uh, but again, sort of narrowing it down and sort of feeling my way. And uh, so, uh, uh, commercial artist was what I wanted to, to be. So, my portfolio coming out of UNLV was geared towards uh, illustration. Uh, you know, nice, slick illustration, finished work. And uh, being from Southern California, I had no real idea of, uh, of trying to get a job, how difficult it would be to get a job. Because, you know, to do um, illustration type work, particularly for a person just breaking into the industry, uh, Chicago and New York would be the areas because they do all the, you know, the publishing. You know, that's what the publishing is. Not in Southern California, not outside of LA, you know. Um, so uh, coming back home, you know, I have wife, two kids, two small kids, uh, three kids now, but at the time, two small, if or toddler boys and my wife. And so we're, uh, so I, you know, I gotta have a, a job. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm putting in resumes and uh, filling out resumes and going on job interviews and, and Shortly after I got offered a job doing drafting, a uh, drafting place, and that was, you know, that was close to, it was pushing the pencil, right? And so, so I, so I take the job in drafting, uh, and that lasted like one week. I had multiple uh, resumes out, and I got a call from uh, Honeywell, uh, and they had a, a technical illustration department that they uh, that applied for a position to. And uh, technical illustration was a little closer to uh, commercial artists. You know? And so I, I took that job and it was there for about a year and a half. Um, but the um, technical illustration, we had about five or six people in, the, in, our, uh, in our group. And one guy, uh, he had the opportunity to do all the exploded views, all the really, really creative stuff. And the rest of us did block diagrams and flow charts. <laughs> so it was very uh, creative for um, you know a person who had uh, gone to school, you know, taking all the anatomy class or, or the uh, uh, drawing classes, painting classes, sculpture classes, all this stuff. And so my creativity was um, was pretty stifled, but it paid the bills. Uh, and said, so, well, and but after about a year and a half, I said, if I want to do something more creative, I have to be around creative people. So I took a class at night at Art Center um, and the instructor uh, was a gentleman by the name of Sam McKim who worked for uh, WED. Uh, they make and design all the rides for the theme parks. And he was teaching this class called Sketching for Illustration. And he encouraged uh, the class um, about, or he informed the class about uh, the trainee program that the studio had started this was probably about 1973, and his um, and the class and the uh, training program had started about two years earlier, and um, 
And so nobody uh, really followed up from the class on uh, that information except me. I wanted to do something just a little bit more, uh, you know, creative. And so I asked Mr. McKim to about it. He uh, got me an appointment, a uh, uh, job interview uh, with uh, Eric Larson, uh, who was head of the trainee program at the time. And uh, my formal interview with Eric you know, brought my portfolio along and, you know, looked at all my uh, slick um, uh, illustration work. And he said, yeah, that's, that's fine, Ron. Uh, but what we want to see is quick sketches, uh, things done from uh, life and animal and human life. You know, that's, and I'm, I'm saying, you know, I didn't include any of that in my portfolio, uh, not you know, thinking, you know, I mean, they're talking about animation and whatnot. I, I, I knew nothing about animation, didn't know who an animator was, what an animator did, nothing. It was just a, an opportunity to do something drawing-wise, creatively. So I went home and got three sketchbooks because when I was in high school, uh, about six, seven years earlier, my high school art teacher, Ms. Dorothy Clemens, encouraged class to carry a sketchbook and to use it. And that was my junior year in high school because shortly after that, she kicked me out of art class. <laughs> and uh, I, I deserved to be kicked out because I was actually a jerk and whatnot. But, um, but, she, but I took her advice and was carrying a sketchbook. I had these, these sketchbooks. And um, actually going back to 1962, when I was 12 years old, I have sketchbooks going back to when I was 12 years old. Today, yeah. I can go up and and bring me shown to it if I, if I had to. But uh, I had been carrying sketchbook for a long time. And I really started uh, religiously and, and constantly carrying sketchbook at uh, my junior in high school. So I went home and got three sketchbooks and dropped them off at the guard gate at the Disney studio. And about a week or so later, uh, Eric called and um, said that I could start a trainee program anytime I wanted. And so that was my way of getting into the Disney studio, uh, being you know, prepared in the sense of uh, doing some quick, quick sketches. And I've uh, been carrying sketchbook uh, ever since, like I said, my junior year in high school on a religious basis, you know, doing it on a constant, constant basis. And, um, and even today, you know, I, I've got tons of sketchbooks, uh, even, even, even today. And uh, so, you know, that's 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 my uh, interest into the, the Disney Studio. How I got there, <laughs> not knowing anything about it, and 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 I started to learn animation my first day on the job. And being in the training department, it wasn't a guarantee that oh, I'm, I'm working for Disney. I'm working for Disney now. It, it, there was no guarantee of um, uh, of employment. Because you, you came into the training program, uh, you did a, a like a quick, you know, three or four second test for four weeks. You get four weeks to come up with, this, with a, a rough test, and uh, they show it to the review board of um, uh, seasoned animators and uh, executives. And so, well, this person has potential or you know, sink or swim. And they say, well, you know, if he doesn't have potential, then you know he's out the door. Or if he doesn't, if he does have potential, then he'll go on to the next four weeks of training and being able to, under Eric Larson, uh, being uh, shown, uh, you know, the the aspect of animation of, of uh, squash and stretch and timing and drawing on model, everything that goes into uh, uh, to animation, literally. And um, so after. The second four weeks, then uh, you're official. <laughs> you're no longer a trainee. They send you downstairs, and you can uh, you start to uh, learn animation uh, under uh, doing in betweens. I mean, with the, the term in betweens uh, for a seasoned animator. And I was doing in betweens uh, for uh, Fred Thomas and Glenn Keane, who I met my first day on the job, and we became fast friends, even to this day. Um, he was doing in-betweens for Ali Johnson, and we were uh, teamed together in uh, as roommates. And uh, so that was sort of our, uh, my uh, interest in, in entrance into animation, because they were in the time they were taking uh, 
into the trainee program, people who had, like myself, no animation experience whatsoever, but I had the, um, uh, the quick the ability to be able to capture uh, movement and motion uh, in my drawings. And say a person like Glenn, uh, who came in from CalArts, which they had a, a great um, animation program. So he had, so coming into the training program, he had more uh, experience in animation that I had and knowledge. Uh, but on the same time, they took that into consideration. You know, that, uh, you know, I, I, if I could perhaps learn the squash stretch and timing and all and drawing on a model and everything that goes into um, these drawings that move then perhaps I could uh, stick in so you know it took me a, a little a lot longer you know to learn you know the, uh, to be an animator than say Glenn uh, could come in with, with more experience and, then, and again there were people from from my end of scale and all the way through to say Glenn's uh, experience who came into the program and again it was on for my for me it was on on potential perhaps i could catch on to, to the concepts of animation that is incredible i i love hearing that because a lot of times you hear a lot of people who are like you have to go to school to get into something like this but it seems like you did a lot of hands-on learning to get into this well, definitely so yeah definitely so yeah, and, and great mentors. Uh, like I said, I was doing in between for Frank Thomas and get an opportunity to see uh, how he worked and his approach to animation and, you know, just great draftsman and uh, all, all that he put into um, the drawings as well as the thought process that goes into uh, planning out a scene and fleshing out a character. Absolutely. Now, with regards to that, do you think for kids that are interested now getting into animation have to go to a secondary schooling or is it something that they can kind of learn in different manners whether it be in a classroom or maybe out in the open yeah yeah um it's it's so tech technical nowadays um uh, and there you know there, and there's a lot of programs uh that are available for people who to just learn animation the basics and um and going to school is definitely definitely a, um, uh, a step up in, in, in the sense of one's learning and being able to uh, comprehend um, what goes into animation um, and drawing is is foundational. Uh, even though you know you're doing this a lot of you know CGI and and the computer uh, aspect of it, but you know, computer is not going to design your character. It's not going to design your background. It's, you have to do that and program program that in um, to be able to and and to know um, a good drawing, a strong drawing, and and to be able to manipulate the mouse and the keyboard to put your character into that stronger position or, or that that body language that's that's telling your story and knowing the. Um, the timing of, of, of to, to make things weighty and have balance and proportion perspective um so you know there's a, there's you know those aspects but again you know that um the more training you have then the, the better opportunities and that you're going to um to be able to be, be prepared for uh, a career in uh the various forms of literally filmmaking because that's what you know animation is filmmaking storytelling and regardless of whether it's uh, stop action, um, traditional animation, uh, limited animation, uh, you've got uh, CGI, uh, and you know all those forms are just forms of, of storytelling. Absolutely. Now, a bit of a fun question because I hear this a lot from kids. I think because the way that social media and the things that we see on TV makes it seem to them. A lot of kids feel like the only way to be good at a job is to only do that thing all the time, nothing else. But humans, we have so many different interests and likes outside of our jobs that it's kind of hard just to do that all the time. So I love getting to talk a little bit about hobbies and if they're important to our work. Do you have any hobbies and do you find that they help you be better at, say, doing any drawings or animation? Yes, um, I, I wouldn't call it a hobby. It's uh, just things I've learned over the decades. I, I, there's a word I use in, um, in my workshops and in, uh, in my the class I teach, it's quick sketch 
illustration, animation. Three words all thrown together because there, there's so much overlap. And what I've, what I've uh, discovered is that my quick sketching, which is literally storytelling in a very, very short, quick time. And, and the, emphasis, the emphasis on my quick sketching is quick because what can you put down on paper in a limited amount of time, 60 seconds or less? And so that, that eliminates all the details and all the things, that, you know, the bells and whistles that make a really, really strong illustration, but you captured the pose, you captured the, the emotion. And so my quick sketching, it literally helped my illustration work. And that in turn has helped my animation because thumbnailing for my doing thing is simply um, quick sketches, might say with a purpose. You know? um, and so you know, there's a definite, again, overlap because there's uh, aspects of balance, and proportion, perspective, silhouette value, um, timing, squash, stretch. Um, you know, these are all important in a good quick sketch. Because if you look at my quick sketch book, you'll see that there are some very, very interesting drawings there uh, from sitting, standing, you know, sports events. You know, they're all literally storytelling drawings. And that's what you want, a good, strong storytelling drawing which, you know, the quick sketch book has been, uh, you know, translated into uh, Japanese and Chinese language. Wow. And, and not because the, uh, the company, uh, Focal Press, was uh, out pushing it, but they approached Focal and, and wanted to buy the rights to be able to uh, publish in, in those two languages. So, and looking at the, uh, the reviews, from the book quick sketching on Amazon, etc. You know, it gets you know, four out of five star. People are and they're, they're they're writing a review on the book and some. I'm glad I got this and this. and so you know something is working there. You know, and what's working? Well, balance, portion, perspective, doing it quickly, being able to tell the story in a few short line strokes, and then that helps my my illustration work. You know, I've got uh, pen and ink work. And the same concepts of um, balance, proportion, perspective, uh, silhouette value, uh, is it reading? You know, all that, that goes into my illustration work. And my illustration work has um, gotten um, um, you know, best of show, um, first place, uh, you know, these type of awards that come from, from Others, you know, because you're entertaining not only you know not entertaining yourself, but you're actually entertaining others. What do others think of this work? And uh, my work on in Steamboat School, uh, with the pen and ink work there, was um, chosen for a display at the um, uh, Society of Illustrators um, showing uh, when it came out, and so it's on display in New York. Uh, the, the artwork for uh, Steamboat School. And again, you're know, working on uh, uh, really top-notch illustration, or excuse me, top-notch animation, but coming out of the studio of Lion King, Beauty Beast, um, Aladdin, uh, you know, these pictures that are that have been um, monumental and classic, you know, so you're working on you know, the top levels in all three areas. So, uh, so it's not a, so much of a hobby, but a, a passion of loving what I do and having that passion spread up, spread over three different categories and being successful in all three of those categories, which takes it out of just being um, a hobby to something that's, you know, passionately, uh, enjoy it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I I love that because you know a lot of times I think people tend to forget because the way that society is now every side 
thing that we do, whether it be sketching, whether it be storytelling, you name it. A lot of times it ends up getting turned into a side hustle, but we never remember that like, hey, we should be passionate about this thing first before we try to turn it into any of that stuff. So I think that's a great thing to keep in mind. So a question I love talking about, I feel like the industry has made such wonderful leaps and strides towards it, but there's still kind of a long way to go when it comes to diversity and inclusion in the industry because there are so many different voices that we still have yet to hear. Do you think it's important for kids to see people who look like them, sound like them, come from the same place that they do, and speak the same language that they do, doing the jobs that they want to? Oh, well, yeah, it's uh, tremendously uh, important. Uh, I mean, just a couple of incidents come to mind. I'll tell the same story on a workshop up in, let's see, where was that? Um, I think it was in Pennsylvania. And, you know, you get a lot of uh, college kids at the Art School in Pennsylvania, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Edinburgh College. And, and you know, just going through my life story you know, and the, the part about uh, I played football, you know, and, then, and afterwards, after a question and answer and everybody's uh, sort of uh, leaving, a, a kid comes up to me and says, you know, you know, you know I played that, I played football. You know, and, and so, so and as an artist, you know, that that was something that he could relate to. Um, it's just probably, see, probably, probably about this time last year, I got an invitation to, you know, to come to uh, South Africa to do, um, um, for the, um, let's see, let's see, uh, South African um, Animation Festival. Uh, but, uh, and, and in the invitation letter, it was, um, uh, part of it uh, stated that it was important for them that I would be able to come because what, what, what he said was that uh, you can't be what you can't see. And so just my presence there would have been an encouragement to uh, people of color, you know, to see animation as a viable um, career path. And so just seeing me there would have been, um, you know, uh, a plus for what they were attempting to do is to bring more exposure to the community for, um, you know, for the field of animation. And, at the festival that they were having, and hopefully, perhaps they will be able to uh, uh, to come to fruition later this year, or, you know, or, or sometime in the future. But that that was the plan, and you know, the, and a big part of uh, uh, people of color not being a part of the animation industry, uh, from my point of view, is is uh, exposure. You know, we don't see a whole lot of. Uh, images of um, black artists, uh, Chicano artists, etc. Uh, particularly, you know, in our in the community that I grew up in, you know, there was no pictures on the wall, you know, and, and artwork all around. Um, so, you know, just having no real idea that it could be a career path, um, and not really seeing any images that would. Um, um, but say, oh, gee, you know, I, I, I think I, I can do that, you know. Uh, so, you know, it's supposed you, you look at uh, tennis, uh, you see you know, very few individuals, um, you know, Arthur Ashe and uh, Althea Gibson, others sporadically, but, you know, but the uh, exposure to uh, tennis, you might say, is, you know, wasn't that great coming, coming through, again, um, and, get um, something akin to um, basketball, football, baseball, which uh, is more prominent in uh, the community, uh, cheaper to um, to participate in, because you know, you go, you, you take a tennis lesson, you know, it's, it's pricey, you got, you got equipment, material, things to deal with, um, hiring someone to, to show you how to uh, uh, a coach, you know, all that runs into an expense if you're if you don't have the kind of money to invest in that. It makes it very very difficult, uh, uh, even though it, it it's there, it's available. Um, again, you have the the uh, Williams sisters and and tennis, you know, and they're you know tremendously um, 
talented and doing what they do, but you know, there's not that many following their trail, even though they've been up there in the limelight um, and a lot of exposure. But still, you know, there's not a you know a big flux of, of, of tennis play. You know, again, you know, it's, it gets a little expensive, and you, and you got to have a lot of dedication. You got to have, have a lot of drive uh, for any, for anything that that's worthwhile. Uh, so I think you know a lot of it is just exposure, uh, because animation is is so narrow. It's such a narrow field, you know that uh, you know it takes a lot. It's not just drawing. It's um, uh, thinking about and planning out a uh, scene. It's almost like acting, because you know our animators have been uh, likened to uh, actors with a pencil because the characters that you remember are putting on a, what, an acting performance. And when I went to Disney Studio in the trainee, trainee um, department, it was, um, our training was as if we were preparing for, to put on a play. We looked at a lot of um, silent films, Charlie Chaplin, uh, Lauren and Hardy, uh, Buster Keaton, where all the acting was done uh, with body language before sound comes on. And so you want to get, get, get over, uh, an emotion, then you did it with your body, you did it with your face. Um, and so the you know, so that was a, a, a big part of our, our training, uh, as, as well as uh, the joint aspect of it, but, but acting uh, played a, a, a tremendous part. And so uh, there's a lot of different uh, pieces that go into um, preparing myself to be an animator. Absolutely. Do you think that even if people don't see somebody who looks like them doing the job that they want to do, should that deter them from doing it or should they still try to pursue it? Oh, yeah. I mean, there was nobody uh, that I could look to as an artist, even though, you know, there were, you know, Henry O. Tanner and Augusta Savage and, and, and many, many others throughout the, the history that I didn't know about, <clears throat> but not seeing or knowing anybody in art did not deter me from wanting to do something something in, a, in, the, in the field of art. So, you know, don't let a, uh, because you don't see a person uh, who looks like you, talks like you, or walks like you. If you don't see that, you know, there's no reason to, you know, to give up on uh, your dream of doing something, uh, whether it's playing the piano or running fast or jumping high or, or even, um, you know, drawing, painting, sculpting, um, writing, you know, there is, uh, you know, if that's your passion, then for all means, you need to uh, pursue that. For sure. Now, a bit of a more fun question as well, because you've gotten to work on a lot of amazing things from the movies you worked on to your books that you've worked on. Are there any projects in particular that you can remember working on that just hold a very special place to you? <laughs> As you know, um, I get asked that that kind of a question in, in different forms. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, who's your favorite child? <laughs> I mean, you know, every project that I've, I've worked on was a uh, quick sketching um, illustration piece or an animation, uh, animated film. You know, they all have a built in degree of difficulty because there's uh, research behind uh, each one of those aspects um, and the execution of those aspects. And, you know, so I, I don't have a, a, a favorite. They're all, you know, pretty well, pretty much equal in the sense of uh, the challenge and to be, able to be able to express oneself creatively and how, how effective is my creativity in the sense of being able to communicate with the audience, you know, because that, that, that's important, you know, that if you do a piece of artwork and it's not well received or, or you know, then you need to do something to make it <laughs> better, you know. And uh, so uh, the, the feedback that I've been uh, getting has been uh, positive, which uh, it's, it encourages me to continue and to continue to grow because you know, I have not reached where I want to be. I'd like to continue to grow as, a, as an artist and get better at my craft and be a better storyteller. That, that, that's, yeah, I want to be a better storyteller. 
and as a writer uses words to tell uh, and convey a story, then artists use drawing pictures to tell the story. And so I want to be a better storyteller. I love that. That is awesome. I love it especially because a lot of times we think that once you reach a certain point that you can't learn, you can't get any better. But I love hearing that you're constantly trying to look to get better because that's a great, great thing to try, especially in this industry. So another question I would love to ask because a lot of kids are unfamiliar with the type of process that goes into making an animated film. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that process? What goes into it? <laughs> wow. Um, let's see. Here. Could, I, I can, um, could, could, can I, uh, well, let's put it this way. Right. Start, 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 you know, what goes into it. It usually takes about four or five years to, um, from, start to finish, you know, from, from the initial concept to the screen, somewhere in that, that area. It starts with a story, right? You, you gotta have your, your story, whether that story comes from uh, a book or something that's already in existence or an original uh, story. Uh, that's what your, uh, the initial concept. So you have, you know, somebody's gonna story uh, from a book. I said, you know, you have a script writer who's gonna take that story and they're gonna, you know, do your script. And so you're, uh, story, script, then you have your workbook artist, right? You got a workbook and the workbook artist is going to take those word pictures and make a visual of those. And they're going to uh, be in, in involved with the, uh, the look of the picture. Uh, you know, I mean, you say in, in written words, you say, well, you know, she wore a red dress. Well, you know, and so now visually, you have to come up with how red is red. You know, is it pastel red? Is it purple, deep purple red? You know, so so now you have to take those that word pictures and make a visual out of them. And so you got your workbook artists, um, you have your layout people, uh, layout department. You know, who's going to give you a layout and, um, and a background in which the character is going to um, act within put on his performance within that background. Um, then you have your uh, rough animators, which I was, we consider a rough animator and, and doing roughs, um, concerned with um, the acting of the character. That's why uh, animators would be referred to as actors with the pencil, because I'm, I'm concerned with how this character is, uh, is acting within the, um, in the scene, and the length of the scene that's called for. I remember Glenn King uh, saying, it's working on rescuers. And uh, he was uh, doing a scene of um, Bernard's sweeping, um, with, you know, swoop, broom sweeping out front. And he took his drawings to Eric Larson. And, 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 the, and Eric was saying to Glenn, you know, uh, what's his attitude? You know, uh, you know, why, you know, why is he, he sweeping? Uh, is he happily sweeping? Is he, board sweeping, you know, so the emotional aspect of, of how he is going to be uh, moving the, the broom is going to be a reflection of his inner attitude about sweeping. And so, you know, so it's the thought process of your characters that um, becomes very, very important, you know, in, in, the, in the scene. So as a so the rough animation and from the rough animation drawings, they would go to the cleanup aspect and they would be, they would put in all the, the details of, uh, of the character and um, put him on what they call on model, using a model sheet for the, for the particular character that you're working on. And from there again, um, you know, we'd go to uh, special effects and uh, they would be dealing with uh, any effects. Um, in animated, inanimate objects that are moving, uh, rain, snow, um, you know, the effects of wind on flowers, uh, you know, uh, thunder, uh, and all these these uh, special effects aspects. So there's a lot of different departments that would come into play before you got the final composite of 
uh, an animated scene and think in, in, uh, in terms of one twenty-fourth of a second is one drawing comprising, uh, which is no different from live action. Because if you freeze frame, say, Star Wars and go get a Coke and come back, uh, and it's just a series of photographs, right? And a series of photographs run to a projector at 24 individual pictures per second gives you the illusion of movement. And it's no different from animation uh, or hand-drawn or CGI. It's one individual frame at a time, uh, which makes up the whole of the, of the picture. So in an illustration, you tell a story in a single drawing, but in animation, you tell a story in a, what, a series of drawings. Absolutely, that's incredible. And I love the way that you broke that down. It does make it a lot easier, I feel, for kids who are interested in it, learning about it. Because there's not that much out there of how each little piece gets put together in a film or even how each little drawing makes up an animated film. So it's really cool to know those different steps and processes for that. Okay. So a couple more questions for you. These ones are my favorite because I feel like they take everything nicely and tie it together. The first one being is that you've done a lot of cool things, but we're also in a pandemic right now. So we're also working on a lot of cool things at home or we're doing just little self projects. Is there anything that you've been working on that you'd like to share with us? Uh, yeah, um, I do a pen ink work, and I just um, finished up a piece, um, and it's at, actually it's um, uh, took to the printer, and they're doing proofs of it, uh, so I can do okay for um, um, for prints being made. Uh, so you know that's what I'm working. Let's see, I'm working on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also designing uh, the city of Monrovia uh, has uh, what's called uh, neighborhood posts, um, and they they're um, they're going to be uh, let's see thirty inches square or thirty inches round, right? Um, so and they're uh, on a pole, <laughs> ten foot pole, but they're uh, thirty inches round uh, of uh, individuals who had made uh, contributions to the. Uh, uh, to the city of Monrovia, or had lived in Monrovia for a period of time. And so I'm working on that because uh, there's some submissions due like in April. So I'm, I got that going. Um, there, there, actually, uh, my blog, uh, ronhusband.blogspot.com, there's a, there's a picture of uh, one that I've done uh, about a year or a couple years ago. Uh, so I'm working on that, uh, like I said, my um, pen ink work, and see what else. Oh, <laughs> trying to prepare for for my classes. Uh, you know, I'm teaching, uh, and uh, one of the schools uh, opened up a couple of weeks ago on Zoom, and then another school will be opened up in, in another couple so of weeks. I'm cool. so trying to prepare uh, for my classes. Uh, so, you know, just keep keeping extremely busy, uh, trying to uh, keep my head above water. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you're doing an incredible job of that, and especially in a pandemic where it's important to keep doing something so that way we don't get bogged down with, you know, feeling sad or feeling blue about being inside. That is awesome to hear that you're keeping up with all that stuff. So last question for you, my favorite of the entire episode if there's a kid out there right now that wants to become an animator, is curious to get more into animation, or just wants to learn more about it, what do you think the one thing they should walk away from this episode learning is? Draw, 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 and draw some more. Um, <laughs> you, you, you have to, you know, draw. Uh, and, and then, you know, carry, carry, you know, carry the sketchbook, and filling it up with uh, you know, quick sketch drawings. Again, you know, not, not real um, detailed drawings, but just uh, looking at life and seeing people. You've seen a football game or a basketball game or or anything that you're, you're seeing, just drawing. Uh, carrying a sketchbook, carrying a sketchbook and just drawing uh, on a constant basis. Uh, I was watching a football game. Uh, Weeks ago, and 
uh, watching uh, Lawrence of Arabia. Uh, there was camels in, in, in it. Um, so, you know, these are just uh, too much football. You know? so, <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, drawing, you know, draw, uh, just sit down and, and draw. You, you, you got animals around the house, you can draw your animals. Uh, you, you can, uh, you know, you go, if you go places, just watching people and drawing people wherever you are. Um, you know, there's a tremendous amount of um, uh, nature programs on television as you can see lions and tigers and bears and, and exotic animals <laughs> that we would see outside the zoo. Uh, but you can, you know, you can, can sketch those animals, draw those animals. Um, you know, there's, <laughs> I discovered, uh, you know, um, there's, uh, wrestling, you know, there's a lot of action, there's a lot of muscle bodies and all kind of action going on. And so drawing from, from and there's a, you know, like, um, what is it, um, Turner Classic Movies channel, uh, where they do, uh, they show a lot of old 30s and 40s movies, uh, but they're, uh, and they also, they show uh, like a lot of Westerns and, you know, period pieces. So you can draw um, clothing that you wouldn't see on a normal basis, you know, uh, like if you're watching Gone with the Wind, you know, they they got these big flowing gowns. And so there's a tremendous amount of things to draw, um, even though we're, you know, confined, you know, because of the pandemic and we can't get, get around a lot, but there are things things to draw, you know. And uh, so uh, you know, I would encourage uh, younger kids and even older, you know, artists, you know, just draw. <laughs> there's, a, there's a passion in it because everybody can't draw. You know, same as everybody can't play basketball, everybody can't sing, and everybody can't play the piano. Well, but if, if you have a passion for drawing, or even whatever you do, you know, it's going to take um, practice. And, and, and you know, and I say, you know, practice will not make you perfect. Practice will make you better at what you do. You know, and so uh, practice, 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 and practice drawing. You know, for, Thank you so much. That is such wonderful advice. And I hope you kiddos out there learned a lot from that because I know I certainly did. And now comes my favorite part of the show where I'm able to show you what I was able to do while we were chatting. I'm going to warn you, though, that the lights in my studio do like to mess with that. So I will send you an actual copy of it, but I'm going to try my best to get this up in here. <laughs> All right, I'm giving you a thumbs up on that one. I'm giving you a thumbs up. Okay. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'll send it over. Um, actually, uh, for probably about the last month or so, I've been thinking about doing a blog on uh, people who have drawn me. I'm usually drawing people, and over the years, you know, I've collected uh, a little collection of uh, people who have captured me, whether I'm doing a workshop or you know whatever, and and people have really drawn me. So, uh, so I'll, I'll add that to the blog, you know, because I've got several images of people who their interpretation of me. And so so <laughs> that'll go along with so that by all means send me a copy so I can include that. Well thank you so much um for joining us today. Thank you so much for your wonderful advice and thank you for your nice compliment about the artwork and thank you again to everyone who tuned in. Again I am your host and in-house artist Aaron Leffler. Catch you next time on the drawing board. <laughs>